This program is brought to you by Emory University. The only thing that has uh, sufficient energy to bail us out as a planet and to uh, develop a sustainable uh, energy basis for our civilization going out for centuries is solar. Uh, there's an inexhaustible amount of solar energy. We get, there's enough energy coming from the sun uh, every hour to power the planet for a year. With regard to, uh, you know, sustainable energy, things that uh, don't harm the planet, uh, there's kind of two general approaches. There's making electricity using sunlight, and uh, which and photovoltaics do this now. Uh, and electricity is great. The problem is you can't store it very well. Batteries are very, uh, very, they're non-dense. They're inefficient for storing um, electrical energy. They're roughly uh, anywhere from 50 to 100 times less efficient than a, than a, a tank of fuel of some kind compressed gas, gasoline in a gas tank of a car, whatever. Uh, so that gets to the other approach taking, being taken internationally and that is to try to make so-called solar fuel that is use sunlight and water and make either hydrogen by splitting water, H2O, into hydrogen and oxygen or to reduce carbon dioxide with water uh, to make carbon-based fuels. Basically to make solar fuels and to some extent uh, solar electricity and once you have electricity in a battery then you in principle can use that to make fuel. Uh, again, you want fuel because it's much more energy dense. We're never going to fly a 747 across the country on batteries uh, or stored electricity. Okay, uh, We need a way to make fuel from water and or CO2 plus sunlight as the energy source. So you need a catalyst to do that. Okay, now there's there's scores of groups working on this and right now we have catalysts that are as interesting and fast and, and promising as anything uh, internationally. And that's where a lot of the attention to Emory's come from, the, uh, from our work in that area. So there's lots of researchers doing similar type water oxidation catalyst research all over the world. Um, we collaborate with lots of people all over the world as well on this very topic, other ways of probing our catalyst um, and developing new catalysts. However, what Dr. Hill in our lab really is, um, I guess, known for is that the ultimate stability of these types of polyoxymethylate compounds. So we were one of the first groups to really use this type of compound for water oxidation catalysts. And since then, many other groups have reported similar type compounds or started doing research um, in quite similar fields to where we work now because it seems that these types of compounds make great water oxidation catalysts. The science paper that we published in, or that our group published in 2010, um, has received enormous attention from the global research community for being um, as fast as it is and more importantly as stable as it is. So that's really been sort of the blow up point ever, and ever since then things have been kind of like crazy in here. Lots of, lots of other groups are reporting on our compound. Um, we've done follow up studies since then and since then we've developed, so as fast as that complex is, we've since developed a compound that's twice as fast as that one. Um, it's yet to be published, but it's been presented at several meetings. And I think that once this publication comes out, it's really gonna be another monumental step for the field. No one is produced a catalyst fast enough for global scale implementation, right? But we're getting closer every day, and we've made very serious headway in producing faster complexes. So with this new complex, not only have we made a faster water oxidation catalyst, but we've learned a lot about how to make even faster water oxidation catalysts. So we now understand more about what sort of changes we can make to our compounds or other people's compounds to make even faster compounds than the ones we've already prepared. And, and the dream is that every, every house and possibly every car, ultimately every jet aircraft, um, every energy consuming thing would be a leaf. Uh, in other words, it would be a self-contained system that would absorb the sunlight, separate the charge, and with the separated charge make fuel with the electron, the minus, and oxidize water to oxygen with the positive. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.